everybody. Welcome back. Eric Wingman Peterson inviting you to come take a look with us with Star Citizen. Everything related to Star Citizen and the community. It's a nice, fun look, weekly look at what happens around Cloud Imperium games. And, you know, come on in and sit down on the couch and enjoy the ride. We have a very, very interesting show this week. We have the Week in Review. We have Forum Feedback. And we have wide world news, tidbits from the real world at large, and of course, we have an interview with 3D vehicle artist Jeff Cabot. Let's get started. Well, guess what, peeps? You're not going to believe it. We are in HD as we stream. That's right. Just take a look. Let's get a little close and snuggle up. Take a look at that. Isn't that cool? Now, if you haven't gotten the 3D image, make sure right around this area here, there's a little gear you need to select. Just select the 720p, and you'll, you'll get to see every stinking wrinkle in my stinking face. I can't help it either. But hey, we're, we're finally streaming HD. Thanks a lot to YouTube for giving us that opportunity. What else is happening this week? Well, hmm, Chris is in town. That's right. What does that mean? It means forum feedback is going to be incredible this week. We're actually going to extend it and make it a little longer. Um, and we're looking at new office space. Chris is going to help us look for new office space here in Austin. Why? Well, we're a bit like a clown car in here. We've got elbows and heads hanging out windows. We've got about 30 to 31 people in about 2,800 square feet. And so this space's lease is coming up, and rather than extending it further, we're going to look for new space. And we got some pretty cool ideas of where we're going to be, and we'll take you along for the ride. In fact, I think this is a good time for little wingman's nose cam. Why don't we take a look around the office and just see how crowded we really are. Let's turn the light back on. Let's go. We're going to take a little slow roll here. Adam's over there. There's Rico. This is why we're all crowded in here. Look at, look at our server room, man. This is just crammed in here, isn't it? Server room. Server, <laughs> server room. Right, right. We are elbows in a clown car. There's Ron, Jeff. What's up, Harry? How you doing, buddy? Cool. There's Jason checking, doing some work on the Oculus Rift. Woohoo! We got Jeff with the hair, the dreaded locks, baby. There's Brendan hiding the bear. Tom. We'll take a look around there. Look, we've had to put up dividers here. We're just so crammed in here. Let's go around the other way, though. Check this out. Here's the artist room. We have actually seven people in this room, generally speaking. You know, there's Moreland's chair. There's Eli sits right there. It's just crazy crowded in here. 2,800 square feet. Whoa. There's Brian. We'll have some more stuff on the mocap going on. Oh, there's, what was that, Chris? Do you have something to say? It's crazy in here. It's crazy. Cool. And then you got, the show. you got Forrest. Start the show. Start the show. <laughs> and you got Rob over there, Nathan. <laughs> Kyle's over here. You can see yeah. Ben and Brittany. Look how close Ben and Brittany are. And then we got Justin in there. Justin's backed up to John. I mean, that's a tiny office in there, man. Then we got Pete. And there's the other side of the origin deals. And then, of course, the man himself. What's up, Chris? How you doing, buddy? My office. Yeah, Chris's office right there. Right out there in the middle of the pit. You can kind of see we're, we're crazy. Whoop, whoop. Almost saw the star map there. Whoop. Oh, just had a little bit. There's Chris Olivier. Oh, hey, hey. Watch the camera jiggle. And there's Mark Skelton in here. So we're just all over. Hey, John, go back to the little hole over there, buddy. <laughs> anyway, so you guys can see what it's kind of like here, you know. And there's our massive kitchenette. What's up, Chris? Having a little cappuccino back in there? Yeah, making myself a little cappuccino. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's, you guys can see, we are crammed in here. Now, we only have a one-year lease. So we're about ready to go and, and check out some new space. So come on back. Wow, you guys can see that is crazy. We are unbelievably crowded here, and um, it gets a little bit odiferous, if you know what I mean. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun looking for new office space. Again, we're going to videotape some of that stuff, and they allow it to videotape. I guess nobody does that anymore. We're going to be filming a lot of the stuff we'll be looking at, and I think there's one in particular that we're dying to get. Um, don't want to give too much away yet, but trust me, when you guys see it, oh, beautiful. We're taking Chris out there tomorrow to take a look. I think he's going to. We're also a big, big week this week at Cloud Imperium. We hired Harry Jarvis as a new out art outsource manager. Joshua Alway starts in July as a new gameplay programmer. And in our Santa Monica office, we hired a technical artist, Dave Opresca. So three new hires, and we've still got two or three more to go, you know, along the way. And behavior's up to about seven to ten people, and they're growing. And then we have another company that we haven't announced that's going to be doing planet side stuff for us. We'll be introducing those to you, too. They're out in uh, San Francisco. So, um... It's going to be really cool. And they might just have some veterans from some original Wing Commanders working there. Mm, that's right. Very, very cool. Getting the gang back. So now what do we look at? It's time for Wingman's 
weight. Well, we started at 236 inglorious pounds. Last week, we made it all the way down to 214. Yeah, baby. So where are we this week? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Excuse me there. How did I gain a pound? Well, I haven't been cheating so much, but um, I did have a big dinner last night. So perhaps let's hope that next week's a little bit better. I apologize for my transgressions. I may actually have to start exercising. Oh, my God. Exercise and the winger. We'll just see how that works out. But I do appreciate all the support. Next week, I promise, guys, I'll be better. We also have Fan Focus. This week, we're featuring several fans and their artwork. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Now, this week's Fan Focus, we decided to take a look at some of the really cool stuff you guys are doing in the forums, some of the stuff you're submitting. Let's take a look at that stuff now. From, from AIB 35 Gavel, I've got a special person in here to look at that. What do you think of that, man? Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I know, right? That's that's some fan stuff that, that's been submitted to us on the on the forums, and that's not all. We got we got like five of these. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. I know, it looks that's pretty Harum. cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Send your stuff to hrcloudimperium.com. We, we could use you. Uh, the next one's from the, called the Barracuda Bomber by Stronic Wanderer. Take a look at that. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, although uh, it, it feels it feels bigger than a bomber. It feels kind of like a small cap ship to me. But, but uh, yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, and maybe a torpedo bomber. A lot, lot, of, lot of detail. Well, no, it's just all the detail on the front. It mm -hmm. kind of sort of, maybe those are meant to be small tiles, but it sort of gives it a sense of scale. And it looks like those radar domes on the top. It looks awesome. Though. It does. It does look very cool. Uh, the Gravis 400F by Rock. We got some talented. We got some. Talented, I'm seriously. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, we're, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, when we open up and we say, "This is how you build it." His assistant to build it. Seeing uh, some player-generated stuff uh, come into our universe. Look at the scale on that thing. That thing is actually really large. Unless that unless that guy is only winning an inch tall or something in real life. And we also have the S-class light frigate by Hazard Sixty Five. That's pretty damn cool. That's pretty too. Sexy, I think I've though. seen that before, though. Hasn't that been out before I saw it on the fan art stuff? It's yeah, really yeah. I think we, I think it's, it's in really the fan art. We decided to highlight some of the favorites. Yeah, yeah. No, we got we got an amazing uh, community. Brilliant. Yeah, I think it looks cool. And the last one is the Strybog B by Odin. Ah, yeah. The the the, the famous old Strybog. That's come along. Yep. It's all textured now. It looks fantastic. Yeah, isn't that cool? So yeah, now it'll be it'll be fun to get these. Uh, looks like it may have a few less weapons than when I first saw it. <laughs> Origi <laughs> originally, it was like. It was just basically a flying, like, mass of guns. Now it's got well, quite a few guns, but not quite as many as I think maybe before. Maybe. I could be wrong. It looks great, so it's fantastic. Yeah, all right. Well, that's kind of the cool stuff go. we get, yeah. right? Scoot you in here, man. Let's get you in here. That's hard with you, Eric. I, uh, it's getting I know. You know, I actually went up a pound this week. It's not. But thank you, you for did. bringing that up. Yeah, you, you didn't know, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I went up a pound. I think it was a steak dinner I had last night. All right. So everybody's clamoring because it's good to have you in town because we can get a lot of extra form fit. So we decided to like double up on the questions. Okay. Are you sure you're up for this? Ready. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right. From Zlinga, he says, will repair of ships be automated, repair bots, repair shops, or will we be able to repair them ourselves to some degree? Uh, so I, it's going to be a combination. So we were thinking that generally for the heavy repairs, you have to be down on a planet and have proper repairs and your repair bot will be able to do certain level repairs. But we're also thinking about having a situation on the bigger ships that maybe there's some uh, damage that you can go and sort of patch over and repair, you know, kind of think of the Millennium Falcon and getting the jump drive uh, working. Uh, or uh, maybe even potentially, which I'd like to try and get and we'll see though, um, some EVA, like you could like maybe get outside your ship and uh, like patch up a few things so you can sort of limp to the nearest base and then have them properly uh, repaired. So a little of both is the uh, is the correct answer. That'd be kind of fun to do actually, getting yeah. out there zooming around in space and somebody No, no, it'd be cool. I mean, the we, we you know, it's a first person engine. Uh, we just have to do some stuff for the zero G maneuvering. We're gonna have some that already so then it's really a matter of getting in and out right. um some ships it'll be easier in than other ships um, because they have like airlocks and stuff. yeah yeah uh, and we got to deal with the transition animations which just adds more sort of content we have to do on the animation side but other than that it, it should actually be quite doable how yeah, brian can do that though one man animation gang right uh, <laughs> oh i think we're gonna eat more i know we're gonna have more animators yeah, i know yeah. from n palman he says
How the hell could they have shipped me to Armitage? It is not even close to Earth, those bloody stupid sons of Tavarin. Unit email. Gossip feedback indicates that your retrieval message has been received. You may wait in front of the bay for pickup. Thank you, Jingo. You are a real bite saver. Dear Wingman, Jingo here is very customer friendly, but Armitage is also very dangerous. Will he and other shopkeepers be at risk from shoplifting and thieving pirates or plundering vandal? Or will the game mechanics prevent shops from being robbed? By the way, is that Mr. Roberts sitting next to you? Dear Mr. Roberts, could you reveal something about the Avenger ship? Because right now I feel an intense need for avenging my delivery to bloody Armitage. Theme up out. Who the hell are you? There it is, grab it! I have it, move out! And it's an evidence! That's great. <laughs> so, so will shopkeepers be at risk from shoplifting and pirates and stuff like that? Uh, uh, well, no. So, so basic, when you're down on the planets, um, pretty much that's sort of the safe zone. Uh, so the danger of being in a sort of more lawless area is what happens as soon as you leave the planet and you, know, you can get jumped. There'll be people around. And there'll be shady people on the planet that'll be tracking you. Uh, but not necessarily uh, there'll be any, like, you know, thieving or robbery happening down on the planets, uh, at least anyway at the beginning. I mean, who knows, once we're live and we're changing things and we right. actually start to do more stuff in first person on the planets, but right now the first person planet stuff is about buying, trading, talking, communicating, finding missions, uh, but it's a safe zone, there's no combat, uh, so therefore there's not gonna be any sort of theft or anything like that. Right. Um, and as we open it up, maybe some of that stuff is, but we don't have, we're not supporting that game mechanics yet. We've already got a, enough of uh, other stuff to support to get this game out there. Amen to that. So uh, what about the adventure ship? You wanna tell them a little bit about that? Uh, well, I think, uh, now's not the right time. We're going to be disclosing the Avenger um, uh, when the new website comes online. There so, might be something big coming up at the end of the month. So, uh, yes. Uh, so that's not very far away from now. So approximately about three weeks you can wait. And then uh, we'll uh, have details of the Avenger and actually quite a few other cool things that we're going to yeah. show you that we think you're going to be quite excited by, which uh, we're pretty excited to show you. So exactly. Great. Now, this is from Ruben02. He says... Will citizens who own a number of the same ships be able to see them all in the hangar? And what will happen to my Connie and Corvette? In the recent hangar preview, it appears they will be too big to fit. Uh, so the, the, the simple answer is yes. Um, and uh, the I think we've discussed it, but there are different levels of hangars. So the hangar that we were showing in the very early preview is the base level of hangar. So that's the hangar that's really for uh, if you've just got an Aurora and... Um, Basically, in Aurora, not much else. Uh, the next level of hangar up, I think, I'm not sure if it starts uh, at the 300i, it may start at the uh, Hornet, a freelancer level, is uh, one level up, and then there's another level of hangar above that, that uh, where the Constellation would fit inside. So uh, they all built to design and fit the ships, and they all sort of modularly scale depending right. on how many ships you've got. So yes, we were we 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 are trying to support uh, some of the crazy number of ships and configurations we have out there. Um, I can't warrant that the frame rate is going to be amazing in the first drop if you happen to have 50 ships sitting in it, yeah. uh, because uh, we're not we're not really working on the LOD aspects of the engine right now. Um, and in the first iteration of the hangar, we probably won't have every single ship. Uh, like, for instance, we won't have the Idris Corvette and a few other things that you can have in the hangar and have access to in the first drop. Eventually, we will. We'll iteratively do it. So the the, the drop of the hangar that will be in um, the August and Gamescon is the one that will have all the ships uh, that were the base pledge ships. Right. So, you know, Aurora, 300i, um, Hornet, Freelancer, Constellation may or may not have the Cutlass. We don't know because that's sort of on the edge of potentially being done or not. Um, and there's almost there's a very small number of backers that only have a cutlass. I think there's like 200 out of you know right. the hundreds, thousands of all you guys. Um, and then as we go on, as the new ships are finished, they'll automatically get dropped into the hangar, and we're also going to be expanding the hangar location. So it's all part of our iterative um, development. Um, right. Never been done approach. before. Never been. So done we'll before. see. Uh, so so this will be good. But yes, uh, Ruben, don't worry. 
your constellation will have plenty of room and uh, room for its friends. Now, we know Ruben, too, because he's the completionist. He's, yeah, he's he, a completionist. So yeah, he's got so quite a few ships in his hangar. Big thanks. Uh, so big thanks to definitely big thanks for doing that. And um, just make sure you have a fast machine because that's going to be a lot of polys to draw. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and I got to go, go out there and get the top of the top of the line. From Zija01, or one, it says, what kind of character customiz customization options will we enjoy when the hangar module is released? Will we be able to create our first avatars? Um, so in the first iteration of the hangar, no, you won't be able to create your avatar right. or dress them up. I think right. we're just going to uh, allow you, and it won't be, you won't be able to choose male or female. It's just going to be a male avatar. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's only just going to be the RSI spacesuit. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we go along, again, sort of referring back to what we are talking before, those are all features that will be coming online uh you know, you don't have to wait till the final game comes out. It'll be sort of coming online. I, I can't remember on which one of our iterative release schedules right. uh, the customization is. I think it kind of involves uh, the planet side it stuff does. too. It does, yes. So uh, that would probably, I would think, be debuting more in sort of 2014, early 2014 versus um, uh, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's part of our iterative release schedule. So uh, we, we basically are going to have a basic hangar uh, that cover the, the sort of necessities and you can do some ship modification and then we'll sort of be adding more items you can modify to your ship, more ships, more variety of hangars and more functionality than the dogfighting and the planet side module. And so basically just think of it as like a lot of the functionality being added and added and added and added. And then by the time we've got most of it done, we'll be ready for the single player alpha of the story and the uh, uh, beta of the um, Persistent universe. Yeah, so. you know, and we're kind of that's it's kind of helping us test that process because yeah. nobody's ever done this, and so you know, this adding and adding and adding. That's what we're going to do to the yeah, final no, and game it, as well. It for, and it, for, it forces us to have our ships polished much sooner, right. game functional, uh, and hopefully we'll deal with configuration issues. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll be for the very first version of Hangar. It'll be our first version of our uh, client downloader and patcher, mm -hmm. and all yeah. these things. Just the process of efficiently downloading new patches right. and all the rest of the stuff. Over time, we'll get this all honed. So by the time we actually start the full the full games ready to go, hopefully it'll be fairly uh, a smooth process. Smooth, right. uh, but at the very beginning, don't expect it to be all perfect and flawless because you know this is this is the beginning. So you're going to be on the rocky path at the start, yep. and then it'll get better and better and better. And by the time the final game's there, it will be hopefully really smooth. Exactly, and and we 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 need your your input to help us out with that process too. So from Posi Das. How high a priority is combat on planets stations? It would be awesome to have Han Solo Greedo type encounter. Well, I mean, so I yeah. so I just mentioned the the my, you know the previous answer that right. there is no combat down on planets, right? Um, and that won't be a feature in the game um, until sort of post proper launch, and eventually we'll bring some of that on. And it's mainly a, a content issue because then we sort of have to have larger areas, more characters, and we've got to design sort of first person, the equivalent of first person yeah. levels to have combat in. And just to do that with all the worlds we've got, with all the spaceships we've got and all the other action we've got, it's just way too much. Yeah, animations for all the characters, the gun animations. carries, but, all this. But the engine itself actually can sort of handle that. Mm -hmm. So that will be functionality we'll add on uh, down the road. Um, and uh, But I, I can't exactly say when it's going to be uh, at the moment, but it'll be sort of a post live. Uh, you know, maybe it's an update a year after the initial game goes properly live. Uh, mm -hmm. There will be combat uh, aboard ships, so right, the shipboarding, shipboarding, and there will be combat aboard space stations because that's considered a, or an asteroid base, because they're considered sort of persistent uh, locations in space. Uh, so potentially you could get kind of a Greedo encounter if it was on a space station. Exactly. Go. And, and uh, so you're saying that sometime in the future, a war might bro break out on the planet. Somewhere, <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, but you never know. have to see. Let's let's not let's not get too ahead. Let's, okay. let's not get too ahead of us. Fair enough. Fair things. enough. So. From Mira Luna, he says, "Hi, wingmen. This is Mira Luna from Star Citizen News Radio, a weekly German podcast. And here is my question: If a visitor is in my hangar, is he able to steal something? By the way, congratulations for your new weight." Two hundred and fourteen pounds. By the way, I just realized why I was shorter on camera than Eric because he had my seat down lower. So Dude, now we're back. So he's so two two inches shorter than me. All right, <laughs> at least two inches shorter, but not two inches shorter rounder. I think rounder. Right, you, sure. yeah, you beat me on the wood. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so he wants to know, can you steal something from the hangar? So, and if you have visitors over, can they take stuff out of your hangar? No, you right. can't. Same same reason. I mean, the hangar is basically a safe area, the same that we're talking about on the planets. Yeah, and you want it. You want to have your friends come look at stuff too. Check out your hangar and bling it out. Stuff yeah, like yeah. No, we're not. We're not playing a. We're not. We're not doing sci-fi thief at the moment. So. Mars tale or whatever. The, <laughs> okay, from Pawan, he says, "How restrictive will the NDA be once you guys release the hangar module for Alpha and for Beta? Will there even be an NDA?" <laughs> uh, well, actually, that would that would be sort of an answer for our lawyers. But I will say that for. Uh, the Hangar um, app, um, we're intending to sort of have a sort of uh, use of term screen or something that says basically, I understand that this is very, very pre-alpha, <laughs> there'll be buggy code, uh, there'll maybe issues, I'm happy to report these, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I understand it's work in progress and like a big, you know in big capitals and you hit accept and then you then you can play the hangar because i mean the only thing i i don't want people to feel like is that the hangar is like completely finished and polished because obviously it's not it's like the very first right. iteration and part of the reason we give it early is so everyone else can give us the feedback and and say mm -hmm. what they like and they don't like or find configuration issues and we can find we can basically crowdsource bugs in a way that uh, you know, it helps actually save us money because if, if otherwise, you know, we would have to have a lot of testers and we are going to have testers on it. But, um, you know, for something that's this ambitious and this big, you know, the only way we truly figure out what the issues are are getting out there super early. Mm -hmm. So doing it this way, we're hoping to avoid some of the problems that, you know, you saw like SimCity have uh, uh, on its release a few Ooh. months ago. Ouch. From Quarrel, they say, are we able to officially name our ships in the Persistent Universe? Uh, well, I think you're going to be able to name your ship. So mm -hmm. you'll be able to give you, you give, give your ship a name. Uh, I'm not sure um, fully about whether you can actually have it sort of see it as a decal on your hull yet, uh, although that would be a goal. So yeah. I think we probably would be able to do that too. Um, it's just a matter of doing uh, projecting lettering um, as an applied decal on the outside of the hull. Um, so uh, what do we do about uh, what are we going to do? I think about? I think perhaps, but do those names I mean, have to be approved. Not, let me promise it just yet. Do those okay. names have to be approved, though. I mean, oh uh, well, you definitely. I mean, if there was any public any public facing uh, names, have yeah. to uh, right. adhere to our sort of policy of uh, of you know, our naming policy. The same as if you name a jump point or you name a planet that you discover or something like that, it has to conform to the naming policy, which is, you know, obviously not any obscene or lewd. Uh, racist, all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Fair enough. Okay. From Romo Potter says, are there any plans to develop a mobile app? I want to be able to engage with Star Citizen when I'm otherwise engaged. Uh, oh, no, definitely. So, I mean, uh, we had it as one of our stretch you goals. Sure so yes, we're, we're planning on having a mobile app. Um, the mobile app that we're thinking of is sort of more a companion piece to sort of check on uh, what's happening in the universe, get the news feed, uh, maybe uh, configure your ship, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sort of do some bartering for missions, seeing if missions out there accepted, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what we're thinking the mobile app uh, would do. And we're also investigating some sort of secondary screen um, options mm -hmm. where sure. you could use it as a, you know, a secondary sort of touch screen while you're in the cockpit. Uh, but um, we're definitely um, uh, planning to have sort of mobile uh, support for the game. Cool. From TC McQueen. Hey, TC McQueen here, the 127th Angry Angel. Listen, we got these van duels all over us before we even know what happens. They're on the address in the star fairs before we can even get away from the ship. Tell us, what do you have as far as probes or satellite that's going to help us find and see these guys before they're right on us? We need some extension of range. Yeah. Ugh. Yes. There we go. Wow. Wow. That's pretty. Hope he's all right. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, New satellites, probes. Uh, well, I mean, we're going to let you have a, there's a lot of uh, different equipment packages, avionics you can, and in terms of that, uh, scanning uh, for different ships, what you can detect, the range uh, are all sort of upgrades and, and uh, different features you can do. So you, you can 
uh, and you know that's going to be sort of a bit of a sort of mix and match and uh, give and take so uh, if you're using a lot of these slots up for like really sophisticated scanning equipment which maybe you would as an mm -hmm. explorer if you're trying to figure out where a jump point is or do long range scanning uh, you won't have as many slots for other things like more combat oriented stuff or more maneuverable uh, oriented stuff or you know power energy oriented stuff uh, but yeah no we're having a lot of I'm you know not necessarily sure about so probes or satellites but there's going to be a huge amount of different sort of radar and scanner packages that you can uh, customize your ships with cool um, from Sixeron says when two groups of ships encounter each other will you be able to tell which are NPC controlled and which are real players hmm. Hmm, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the default is always that you can tell what a player um, ship is and what an NPC ship is. I mean, I think generally because of the sort of handle situation, you probably will be able to. Right. But we haven't really made a choice yet. Uh, I'm actually kind of in favor of immersion, so I think it would be kind of cool that you didn't know that a ship was an NPC ship or a player ship. But I don't really want to commit one way or the other way just yet until the sort of see it and play with it and see right. kind of how it works. And it also has to work with a handle system. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, my goal would be that you would see the universe getting simulated and people going about their business, doing trading runs, being, you know, police actions, piracy, and, uh, you know, potentially, you know, you don't, it's not obvious, it's not night and day that one's an NPC and one's mm -hmm. a player. Uh, but like I said, I don't really want to commit one way or the other way um, until I've had a chance to sort of see what it, what it feels like. Um, the default is obviously you would know, but uh, if we could make it more immersive, it would be cool. I totally, that'd be really cool. From Coral, what level of detail will the ship damage have? I know we can't target any part of the ship, but are we able to destroy a wing, cause massive dents, mess up the paint? So you'll definitely be able to destroy a wing. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure we're going to be doing physical simulation of... Um, damage on like parts of a wing like you were pushing in a side or you were flying and you deformed a bit of your wing because you clipped something uh, but there will definitely be damage levels for different parts so you can target individual parts you can damage individual yeah. parts they can break off they can explode they can do all that sort of stuff so a, there is a very high amount of damage fidelity modeling that will be on the ships uh, and so you should be able to see just by looking at a ship kind of what bits are working what bits aren't working um, so i hope that works as a good answer yeah, I think it did. All right, from Vicious Luggage, we'll be able to change the articulation type of a thruster. I know we can't cram a TR3 into a TR1 slot, but we can change. Can we change a fixed thruster to a flex thruster of the same TR value, or add thrust vectoring to a ship's main engine? Uh, that's going to really depend on kind of what the ship itself will will be set for. So the way the thrusters work is um, the the basically it takes the thrusters type rating uh, and if it can articulate its range of motion and then the hard point that it matches up to also has like a range of motion allowed on mm -hmm. it and then it will take the the, the subset of those basically which whichever is least of the the two um so theoretically um you could maybe mount a fixed thruster where an articulated thruster is uh, I don't know whether necessarily it would be the other way around. Uh, it's sort of going to depend on a ship by ship basis. I mean, a lot of the way the thrusting is working out is uh, most of them would probably be articulated. And if not, it would have to be replaced by, so this is the maneuvering jets, a sort of fixed thruster that would have the standard sort of ability to sort of look a little like the, um, the lunar lander thruster where you can see sort of a nozzle up, nozzle um, you know, out and left and right and down and so on like that. Um, so it'll sort of all, it'll all depend on, on a ship basis. So it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to say, um, but potentially you absolutely could be able to put a, uh, you know, a different type of thruster on, um, you know, like if it defaults with a fixed thruster uh, and the ship allows you to put a uh, upgrade it and have a jointed thruster there, you'll be able to put that on the, uh, the hard point. Cool. So from Mac Jerv Eric, he says... Sorry, they got us. Yeah, uh, if he shoots like that, why wouldn't he want to be my uh, my wingman? Yeah, no, he could be your wingman every day. I know, dude. <laughs> That's pretty much how I see it in the back of your there. Uh, they're already giving me the nerf ship, so you know, are you sure you want to be in there? Listen, I want to thank you for joining us, and uh, now it's time for Brittany and the most valuable post. All right, take it away, Brittany. Right, exactly. Take it away.
Thanks, Eric. Raven Evo started this thread asking the community for tips on playing space sim games. The Star Citizens came out and answered the call with everything from don't crash to eloquent in-game play strategies. Being a novice gamer myself, I especially appreciate the thread. Thanks, Raven Evo, and everyone who participated. You've made the most valuable post. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Brittany. And now it's time for Wide World News. One private space company has big plans to prospect and mine asteroids. But while reaching deep into space is going to take a little bit of time to accomplish, they do have one mission planned a little bit closer to home. I'm Chris Lewicki, President and Chief Engineer at Planetary Resources. In addition to mining asteroids, we came up with another big idea. An idea to bring space within reach for everyone. One that will transform the way that we interact with our cosmos and our own planet. And here it is, the world's first crowdfunded space telescope for you to control. Not only will you be able to join the search for potentially hazardous asteroids, examine distant galaxies, or inspect our own solar system, you will be able to send a picture of yourself into space for the entire universe to see. As part of our mission to identify and mine asteroids, we've made every aspect of the spacecraft smaller and more efficient than previous space observatories. The ARCID has a comparatively large main optic, deployable solar panels, specialized communications antenna, onboard screen, and a camera arm so it can take pictures of itself orbiting the Earth. This project bridges the gap between the Earth's surface and outer space both physically and psychologically. All of us down here are going to be doing something together up there. While our primary mission is to prospect and mine asteroids, we also want to inspire a new generation about space and all of its potential. We've come a long way, but we need your support to get this idea off the ground. Make your pledge and join us as we invent the future. If you'd like to get your very own space portrait or perhaps book observation time on the Ark and Space Telescope, visit the Kickstarter page to back the project and rever reserve your place in space history. And now let's take a look back in time with This Week in Space. June 2nd, 1966, and America is about to set foot on another planet for the first time, even if it's only the footpad of a lunar probe. Surveyor 1 descends from direct trajectory from Earth. No parking orbit for this little guy. This animation shows how Surveyor 1 looked as it came in for a soft landing on the moon. The date, June 2nd. As evidenced by these photos, a spacecraft can land on the lunar surface, and probably a man can walk on it. Some of the terrain is very similar to our soil. A man would leave footprints as he would in sand. Many rocks dot the moonscape. Future flights will photograph other possible manned landing areas and carry instruments to measure surface hardness, information needed before men land there. Surveyor 1, America's first lunar landing in space. And that's your Wide World News. And now, a thoughtful break with our very own Mark Skelton. So how do you handcuff a one-armed man? If you have a hazy thought, post it in this thread here. We just might use it. Keep it original and keep it hazy. <laughs> and now it's time for our own VP of Marketing, Sandy Gardner, interviewing Jeff Cabot. Take it away, Sandy. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Jeff Cabot, our vehicle artist. Hey, Jeff. Tell us what you do on Star Citizen as a vehicle artist. Basically, I make ships, uh, any of the vehicles that the people will be flying around in and blowing each other up. And we have quite a few ships. Yes. So you're a busy man. Very busy, <laughs> but I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Awesome. And where did you come from before you came here? 
Uh, before I came here, I was over at a company up in Dallas called Terminal Reality. I was there for about eight and a half years. Uh, worked on Ghostbusters, the video game, Star Wars Connect, uh, The Walking Dead. Cool. Before that, did did a little bit of stint in uh, visual effects and post and commercials and stuff. Okay. So you do play video games, right? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> and you've, right. heard, you've heard of Chris Roberts. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> played any of his games? I uh, played uh, uh, one of the Wing Commander series at my friend Steve's house. Uh, growing up, you know, I didn't have my own computer, so until pretty much getting into college. Okay. But uh, so I had to go over to his house and, and check it out. What, what ships are you working on right now? On uh, we're back back to back to your vehicles, sure. vehicles and ships. It always confuses me because it's like right. I think of cars as soon as I hear vehicles. Well, it's but then it's gonna be all inclusive. Yeah. I mean, if there's any ground-based ships, I'll be working on those too, okay. or vehicles. So we've got the Aurora, I mean, I'm sure we're going to have the Aurora, the Constellation, the uh, 300i, they're all mm -hmm. going to be out for the Hangar app, so you're, you're probably crunching right now. Right now, um, toying around, with actually working a little bit with helping flesh out the mm -hmm. and uh, then I heard, just heard recently, I might be helping out flesh out uh, part of the okay. as well, so. Exciting news. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, that wasn't top secret. <laughs> <laughs> And guess what? Of course, he's right here with me. How you doing, man? Doing great. Cool. That was a really nice video there. And Sandy didn't have the red shirt, so you're obviously one of the newer employees here at Cloud Imperium. How did you get here? Wow. Uh, <laughs> basically... Uh, In a car, well, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically, when I saw the Kickstarter, uh, I, I just knew immediately that I wanted to, to work on this game. That's cool. Um, and, of course... December rolls around. I hear Brian Brewer is interviewing with you guys. Got yeah. a job. I'm like, let's do it. Got to get there, huh? Yeah. I said, basically, if you hear anything, just let me know. I'll mm -hmm. be there in a heartbeat. So. And that's kind of what happened. And that's you were basically you what came happened. from Terminal Reality, right? You came down that's here correct. from Terminal Reality. That's very cool. We're very lucky to have you. Um, you have some interesting hobbies. Apparently, you like fishing. Oh yeah, love fishing. Any chance I can get. Uh, which is very <laughs> limited lately. But right. Well, that's sorry about that, but you know we're gonna have to make this game. What, what kind of fishing do you like? Fly fishing? Do you like uh, real fishing? What, what's deep sea? What's your favorite kind of thing? Oh, uh, bass fishing. Bass fishing. Bass fishing. Now, do you eat them or are you catch and release guy? Oh, catch and release every time. Just, yeah. So you don't eat fish at all? Well, not like salmon. And that oh. that would be goal. Actually, don't catch too. and release salmon. Of course, you got to no. eat those guys. That is a goal. One day, just go camping, go to a river. Catch a great salmon. Go up to Alaska. Oh, man, that would be really cool. That would be awesome. Uh, so you have uh, cars, man. You're currently into cars. You uh, Is that one of your favorite things? What's your dream car? Oh, God, dream car. Well, I guess originally my dream car was probably a 1996, 97 uh, Dodge Viper GTS Coupe, blue with hot racing stripes. Um, I actually saw one driving around with Brian the other day. Um, actually, my wedding ring has what? Racing stripes on it, based on that car. So you really are you like a NASCAR fan too, or are you just like cars in general? Uh, just cars in general, not so much racing. Um, don't have much time to keep up with that right now, but I'm I do enjoy catching it from time to time. Right now, that kind of ties into what you're doing with us, right? You're the vehicle guy. You're making a lot of vehicles. Right. Um, so what is your favorite ship, or what have you been working on here at Star Citizen? I don't know, Clyde Imperium. <laughs> a lot, right? A, f a few things, uh, but mostly as the most thing that's known right now is the M50. The M50, cool. And you did some work on the Starfare too, I believe, right? I did touch the Starfare for a while. So yeah, that's cool. I mean, that that just happens. I mean, we're we're sort of a kind of like a Ford assembly line, right? We move right. things through this through the pipeline. And you're also a gamer, man, because I see you every time at lunch, I'm walking by and you're playing what exactly at, at lunch? Oh, I don't know. Dude, whatever. You were like a world of tank holic at lunchtime. I mean, you don't even eat. You like in golf. That way, you can have some time to play World of Tanks. You like that game? Of course, yeah. <laughs> like I can't get enough World of Tanks. Right is that now. is that your favorite game or? That's favorite game for right now. Uh, just my main focus. Just try to try to limit how much, you know, keep keep time dedicated to making art and and keeping yeah. up my craft. But when I do get some spare time. I partake in some Are things. you in a clan at all? Or are you just Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Cool. Do you want to... Just recently. Shout out to your clan members? Uh, TKO. Is, is, are Tank all up. the TKO members uh, part of Star Citizen? I'm not sure. I can ask. Not sure. You better ask Jeff or else you're going to be Jeff over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously. Sort of. So, you also like our movie aficionado, right? I, I love going to movies. That's, yeah, that's, that's my favorite thing to do. But no, you, but you had an interesting take when we we're talking. Us, you know, writing up the stuff earlier, we we're talking to you. Why do you like movies? I mean, it's sort of an interesting reason for. 
It's just, I mean, the escape. The You have no control over it. There's no someone screaming, pause the show. Hey, you know, you need to do this or that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just you get in. It's the escape from just the day-to-day life. Uh, <laughs> Somebody yelling, pause the show? That sounds like a, a man with kids. Yes, two, <laughs> two boys. Uh, uh, me too. And uh, pause the show happens quite a bit. Thank God for DVRs, right? Yes. Have they not changed the way you watch television now? It, what would life have been like without it with these kids? I don't know. Uh, we just had to just deal with it, you know, growing up. Now, do, you, do any of the movies inspire you in your artwork and stuff? Oh, of course, of course. I uh, love going to sci-fi movies. Obviously, we went and saw Star Trek recently. That was fun, wasn't it? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. A lot of, a lot of nods to the, uh, we don't need a spoiler alert here, a lot of oh, nods no. to the original, I think. It apparently it says you are a fantasy football guy. Well, I used to be. I try not to. <laughs> really? Now, see, I play. I'm in the fantasy football leagues. Oh, I just I just came to a point after like 14 years where mm-hmm. there was a moment that happened watching a, a playoff game with Aaron Rodgers, and after that moment, I realized, you know, I take this way too seriously. So you're rooting for him to fail, or you're rooting for him to? No, do I was rooting for him to. He was the number one quarterback in for two seasons running and mm-hmm. great points every single week, week in, week out, and goose egg. He had a bad day. Yeah. Well, one, you got a concussion. You can't help, help that. But He's got to get back in the game, man. Yeah. You, he's on your fantasy team. Aaron, get off the turf. Shake out the cobwebs. Get back in the game. He's yeah. got a game to win. Yeah, I understand. There was no, no discount double check that day. No. Discount double check. Exactly. So, um, what do you hope becomes a star citizen? If you could look ten years in the future, what would what would, where would you be, and what do you think? Star- I know, right? Wow, that's a deep question. We're gonna need a little bigger answer than wow, I think. Okay, uh, ten years in the future. Although wow would be an interesting answer <laughs> for ten years in the future. If we could have a, a chunk of that success, that would yeah. Be I mean, it's, good. The, the, I mean, the, the goal here is that we we become a persistent universe that lasts. I don't know, for as long as we can make it last. And we keep adding bits and pieces along the way, right? Right. And you'd be happy working in Austin during that time? Oh, yeah. In this crowded office? It works. <laughs> for now, right? Right. Well, listen, I want to I want to thank Jeff for joining us and uh, thank Chris for being here. And um, we gotta, we're we going to have to get out of here. Thanks a lot to the subscribers and pledgers for uh, everything you guys do. Without you, there's no us. And so we totally appreciate that. Uh, coming up uh, later on today, we've got Strike Commander featured in the RSI Museum with Ben Listnick. i got to tell you, folks, you've really got to check out. There'll be a comm link post about it. This is probably one of the best video updates we've done. It's with Chris and Rob. It's about Strike, Com- Strike Commander when it was being made. Um, the party after party was, you know, maybe one day you guys will get me drunk in an event, and I'll tell you what happened, specifically with Aaron, because it's stinking hilarious. Um, we're finalizing uh, this week. We're also finalizing the list of uh, testers or website testers because we're going to start opening that up in a, up here in a couple weeks because you know we've got the big event coming on the twenty eighth of June, right? Yep. And uh, also, man, join our website. Join our. I mean, join not only join the website, obviously, but join the YouTube channel. Get in the process. Find out what goes on. Whenever we post a video like the com link that's coming later today, you'll be in the know. You'll get a snap. You'll get right to it. Uh, don't forget the after show, Wingman's Hangover, starts about 15 minutes after this show. You know, it's kind of like an informal look at what went on today, and we get a, it's kind of like Skype calls. We talk to each other. We hang out. Get on the chat roll on the RSI site and, um, and hang out, and we'll, we'll go back and forth with it. Um, also, thanks very much to Chris for joining us. This show is absolutely amazing, and, and i got to tell you, when he's here, it's... In- <laughs> You know, thanks a lot to Chris. We appreciate it. Um, and remember, if you want your stuff featured on Wingman's Hanger, send it in. We just might use it. See him where? In the verse. In the verse. Paul seems to be right now. Do you remember how quickly it happened? And how you wished, as Paul does, that you could take your anger out on the person who made you angry. Angry feelings should be gotten rid of one way or another, but always without hurting someone else. But let's go back and see what made Paul angry. About 
can never live to add an ounce of integrity. You're a traitor from a race of traitors. Disloyal to the core. Rotten like the rest of your subhuman race. You belong in the circus. Right next to the dog-faced boy. Things like this happen to all of us. Everyone gets angry now and then and feels like destroying or hitting something. Paul wished he could forget his anger. But the more he thought about Pete, the angrier he got. Perhaps we can understand better how Paul felt if we understand what happens to all of us when we get angry. It's as if suddenly many parts of our body work harder and faster. We feel great excitement. Hearts beat faster, and the blood seems to rush quicker through the body. Sometimes a lot of blood rushes to the head. Our face gets flushed. Sometimes blood rushes to the stomach. Anger makes us feel sick all over. Sometimes we clench our fists or bite our nails. Often we feel as though we were like kettles filled with steam. The angrier we get, the stronger the pressure inside of us. Like the kettles, we must find some way to let the pressure out. Anyhow, with his feelings taken out, Paul may have found that he wasn't angry anymore. That evening, Pete telephoned Paul to apologize. He knew that he'd been wrong. When Paul told him how angry he'd been, Pete asked if he could come right over. So they had a good time together after all. Because it is important to let out our angry feelings, let's think of some different ways of getting rid of them. All these are good ways to get rid of anger. They free us so that we can start having fun again. You see, the important thing is to let out our anger in some active way. By running, or jumping, or hitting the punching bag. And perhaps when we get angry, we'll think of the best ways to work our anger out of our system.